I, the, the, here's the sad thing. Like, uh, like a year into his presidency, I realized that my son, Donald Trump, is going to be the first president that he remembers. That bummed me out. Like, it was just at that age. Like, he knew who Obama was when he was, like, little. But, like, you don't keep memories, right? So, like, I could see the memory fading out of him. I was like, no, 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 no. It's like trying to do that Spock thing, remember, right? It just didn't work, freaked him out. Because like, that's gonna be his baseline idea of what a president is. Like for me, the first president I remember was Ronald Reagan. And say what you will about Ronald Reagan, at least he seemed like the president. Right? He was an actor, like I didn't know, I didn't know he was a fraud, I didn't know he was in like movies with chimpanzees back in the 40s or whatever. But he seemed like a presidential dude. But like Donald Trump just seems like a guy who wandered off the White House tour and up to the microphones and just started talking. They're like, no, 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 no. Except they're not going, no, 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 no. And he still got elected even after that horrible Hollywood access tape came out that like they leaked that audio where he said all that stuff. And it didn't, it didn't stop him. It was amazing to me. Especially because four years before that, uh, like they had another audio leak. Mitt Romney, the Republican, was just saying 47% of people aren't going to vote for me anyway, blah, blah, blah. And people were like, oh, we got you. That's, that sunk his campaign. Four years later, Donald Trump is like, oh, I can grab all the pudendums I want. I'm still trying to keep it clean. I don't know if it was the vulve or whatever. <laughs> it's in the news, I can say it. I... And it didn't, like, people are like, eh, people say shit. You can't, you know, don't worry about it. Like, imagine, I mean, if, like, what if Romney had been caught on tape talking about sexually harassing women? Are you kidding me? That would have been hilarious, let's be honest. It would have been, like, Mitt Romney style. Oh, if you're famous, you could just do whatever you want to to a woman. You could just walk up to her and gently brush her hair with the back of your hand slightly. You know, you could... Uh, you can goose her a little bit, but it, nothing, you know, in the small of the back with, the, with your palm. Nothing too frisky, nothing too fresh. Uh, you can tell her her perfume smells nice and she just has to take it, you know, like Mormon sexual harassment. It's like, it's not okay, but it's not as bad. Rick Perry tries to get caught on tape talking about sexually harassing women. Just screws up the anatomy somehow. Oh, I just do whatever I want to when I'm around a woman. You know me, man. I just walk right up to her and I grab her, you know, right in her, her front hump. You know what I mean? It's like sort of connected to the shoulder at an angle. You know what I mean? Any of y'all got a picture of a woman I can look at real quick? Rick Perry, man. That's a good old boy right there. I love, I like, I'm not from Texas. But I love living here, and I love Texan accents, voices. And he's a great, like, he's a great example of that, man. I love, the, I love, love doing impressions of those people. Tommy Lee Jones, he's like a, my main favorite. He's got the most Texan. He does, and he does my favorite Texan thing, where you change the speed of how, of how fast you're talking in one sentence. Like, he does that. Pay attention. Next time you see him in a movie, here's how he goes. Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones starts talking real fast the first part of the sentence, and by the middle part of the sentence, he starts to slow it down a little bit. By the last part of the sentence, he can make a point. <laughs> right? That's what they thought. Every old Texan dude that I know does that. It's called a TLJ. That's what it is. That guy TLJ'd me. But they are div we are divided as a... Like, I, but, like, we're starting to get away from the two-party system. I can feel it coming. I'm very excited about that because I'm sick of it. It sucks. It doesn't work. And also, the jokes are lame. They just go two ways. Like, we need more directions. Like, I like insults. I like, you know, because before it was like the insults, it was just like the left would insult the right. You're not a bunch of racist rednecks. The uh, right would insult, but I would love it when it would go that way, when conservatives would insult liberals, because they always insult them for liking good things. That's always like the basis of what they're saying. You liberals, you're nothing but a bunch of latte sipping, eggs benedict eating, pot smoking assholes. <laughs> well, I don't care for your tone, sir, but thanks for implying that I had a great morning because that's what you just very sumptuously described in your burn. Oh, you like Bernie Sanders, huh? Why don't you go eat a salad, a fruit salad, and listen to an opera? That's exactly what I was going to do today. This is weird. Why are you...
But yeah, I. Um, but it's weird. Is it gonna, you know, we're gonna, you know, like, you're gonna. People are gonna hate whoever is president. I remember when Obama was president. People hated that guy. They hated him. And even when he started the campaign, I mean, like, you may not agree with his policies or whatever, but like, you gotta. I mean, I admired his 2008 campaign. He was trying to unite groups of people, bring them together. It was inspiring. I'm saying we're going to my campaign. I will not be divisive. There's too much division in this country. I will bring folks together, black and white, rich and poor, Latino and Asian, Jews and Muslims. Like, mm, careful that one. I don't know. <laughs> Bloods and Crips. The gatekeeper and the key master. All right, now that's a very bad idea. If I understand Ghostbusters correctly. But man, they would go after him. Mm. And like they would find every, they, would, they were so good at taking everything he said and trying to like twist it in some way so it was like sinister. Like Fox did that all, Fox News did that all the time. Like he could see the most innocuous shit. He'd be like, uh, I like dogs. Uh, I've always liked dogs. I like petting them. You know, uh, playing fetch with dogs. Dogs are good. Like, like the ad for five, President Obama says he likes dogs. <laughs> then they show that, they'd be like, sound familiar? They show that grainy footage of Hitler petting his German shepherd or whatever. Like, all right, come on. We got, they whittled down the Democratic field. There was like 184 people running, and now it's like 28. That's good. We're making progress. So far, it's just like, uh, you know, businessmen and politicians or whatever. That's fine. I'm just glad, I was really worried that the Democratic Party would try to like do this counter, so like Donald Trump won because he's famous. Like I was worried they're gonna do this like counter celebrity thing. Because when Trump won, people were like, well, Oprah should be president next. I'm like, no. But like they could do, because like all the celebrities are on that side. They get around like George Clooney that everyone likes. But, I, but, but George Clooney wouldn't win. Like I don't know if you know this about George Clooney. George Clooney, a few years ago, invested in a tequila company that he didn't do anything for, he's invested in it. That tequila company on its own became extremely successful. They uh, sold the company. Off that sale, George Clooney made a billion dollars. A billion. So he's George Clooney and also has a billion dollars. There's a limit to what people are gonna connect with in their presidential candidate. Like I know Trump is, he won, but he's rich, but people are like, but he's also dumb and ugly, so people are like, yeah, that's my fucking dude, man. Like George Clooney, he'd get knocked out in the primary debates immediately based on that. Mr. Clooney, here's my question for you. Uh, you're George Clooney. Why do you also want to be president of the United States? Well, that's a very good question. I appreciate you asking that. And I guess the answer to that question would be, I, care, I love America. And I care about America. I care about Americans. And I know it's hard out there for people. It's really hard out there, right, guys? I mean, it's hard uh, for me, too. I'll give you an example. A couple of years ago, I accidentally made a billion dollars. <laughs> At first, I thought it was a prank, you know, like Brad Pitt, Matt Damon. We're always doing that, playing gags and boners on each other. <laughs> uh, but no, it turns out it was true. And you guys, you know, the, the financial ramifications of that amount of windfall in one fiscal year, I mean, the, the, the accountant fees alone would pay for the shitty farm I'm standing in front of right now. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Senator Sanders, a response? All right, all right, uh, let me be, I, I want to be absolutely clear here to everybody listening. I have been a fan of George Clooney since Facts of Life, okay? <laughs> Although I didn't completely fall in love with him until ER. I think, I think the Ocean's Eleven series is so much fun it should be heavily regulated by the federal government in my opinion. <laughs> I even enjoy Monuments Men. However, fanboy aside, the top 1% of uh, you know, the American people uh, don't deserve to be represented by the top 1% of top 1% of extremely good-looking accidental billionaires. And that's simply the truth. He wouldn't win. 